own main UPS since the batteries are back there and I've pretty much been unable to get at them for a couple of years. So I've got my meter hooked up and my very trusty ancient Dell laptop hooked up via a serial cable to the UPS and I've hooked up a big lamp to it to put a load on it and if we take a look here the UPS was made in 2006 and I changed the batteries I got these two car batteries in 2009 and I've used this handy little hack and I've told it that it's got two external battery packs installed and let's see we've got the load percentage is 63% and the run time is 102 minutes which is quite a bit more than the original batteries would give us anyway that battery has been these UPSs have a function to essentially count with wear leveling so the battery constant changes with time even if you don't run a battery calibration so I'm suspecting that this UPS has overcompensated because I would think that I would get more runtime out of these batteries. So I'm just going to use apctest.exe and run a battery calibration while I'm doing other stuff around the shop. So, battery runtime calibration, press 2. Let's see if it works. Do you want me to stop if the battery goes too low? Hell no. There we go. Now the battery voltage is dropping quite fast. But uh, this is actually normal for lead batteries and in a few minutes the voltage is probably going to start rising up again once they've started to get used to the load. There we go. Going right back up. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but pretty much all the acid batteries that are left to just lie for a while would do this. And you can essentially get over a volt back. And you can keep on going up for half an hour really, depending on the load. So I'm gonna let this thing run my 600 watt, well 500 watt work lamp and we'll see what kind of battery state we get on this thing when it's done. Well, we'll talk about disappointment. <laughs> These batteries don't seem to be in quite as good shape as I had hoped for. It ran for about 10 minutes and then it figured nope I'm gonna quit the self test for battery voltage dropped to about 11 volts during that time oh dear it seems I've got some work to do with these batteries because I think they've gotten a bit lazy over the years but maybe we can do something about that okay so what I'm gonna start by doing is give them just a couple of cycles at fairly low load in order to essentially wake them up a bit and I'm going to give them a good shake to mix the electrolyte up and just uh, try and get a bit of life in them give them a bit of exercise and if that doesn't do anything then I'm going to try and hook up my desulfator oh there we go I just gave these batteries a big shake, just shaking them all, all over the shop in order to mix the electrolyte up, and <laughs> our loaded voltage with just my computer and some stuff went up by about 0.4 volts from just doing that. So, it seems the electrolyte had gotten a bit uneven inside of them. So, that's a good sign. Now I've just got to cycle them. 28 volts. Forty amps. I have to admit, I wanted to try this thing. It seems to do its job. I'm going to overcharge these batteries to about fifteen volts to give them a bit of a kick. So after that rough treatment, I've taken to giving these 
battery is a very long slow charge which took about 14 hours and they didn't want to drop below about 0.7 amps ever so that's kind of concerning but I'm going to give them a couple of slow nice cycles using this car lamp over here which draws about 8.5 amps and they've been going for about an hour so that's the voltage we're getting which is pretty okay we're at least know that they can <laughs> provide about 8.5 amp hours by now since they've been running for an hour or so so I'm just going to leave these here it's hopefully going to take a long time coming up, coming up at 2 hours, still going strong so we've drawn about 17 amp hours out of these maybe they're supposed to be 100 together so yeah. and there we go, we're about 5 hours in well, five and a half, and we're down to about nine volts. Still with the load connected, so they aren't entirely empty yet. But I'd say these batteries could do with some charging now. So I'm just going to hook up my normal seven amp charger and let them slowly charge back up. Doing them off, we've drawn about 50 amp hours out of them, which uh, since it's over such a short amount of time, that's actually a fairly good value because batteries are usually specified over a 20 hour period, so and a less than 20 hours of discharge time and they can have less capacity so with a bit of luck, these can still be saved well there we go, I just disconnected the load a minute ago and the battery voltage is slowly climbing up a bit but these batteries are pretty deeply discharged but I'm going to let them settle for just a few minutes, maybe half an hour and uh, see how far we get the voltage back up it should, well, go up quite a bit still I'd expect somewhere around 10.5 or 11 volts and there we go, charging slowly at 7 amps another day, another battery problem this has been left to charge overnight Fourteen and a half volts. About what's that? One amp. Half an amp of battery. Suppose that could be worse. So, I'm gonna give them another cycle and see if we get more than fifty amp hours out of them. There we go. I'll let them rest for about an hour now, and. It's time to hook up the load. I think we have a slightly higher OCV now than they did when I did this last time, so that's a good thing. So, look for the light. Poof, there we go. Now we're just going to have to sit for another few hours. Now I'm going to put my horrible old Samsung smartphone to time them again. Alright, we're about five hours in again and we're seeing pretty much the same results. If I were to let these run for five and a half, we'd probably be down to right around nine volts again, but I'm not going to do that because since we're practically seeing the exact same discharge curve, I'd be keeping an eye on them. I don't think we're going to get any more capacity out of them by cycling them. So, load off and let's see what OCV, OCV we get if I could get my probe out nine on nine ten volts ten oh five yeah pretty much exactly the same as before but at least they've been exercised a bit, so I'm going to charge them back up and then hook them back up to my UPS and see if they perform any better than last time and there we go, I'm using two chargers this time to speed the process up a bit and since I've got lots of cheap multimeters, why not use them? 
Although I should note that even though these two read very differently, even if I probe the exact same spot, they aren't the same. And if you really don't believe me, I'm going to take both probes. There you go. Negative, positive. There you go. 0.3 volts of difference. Oh well. Better than no monitoring. Well, something really weird has happened tonight because I came up and my computer won't turn on. And it didn't take many seconds to figure out if the UPS was turned off. And well, it has no battery, so it's probably not going to turn on again. But why it's turned off is beyond me. There hasn't been any power failure that I'm aware of, and my clock upstairs, which doesn't have a battery backup, hadn't lost time. So, this thing must have just died. Oh well. I've got my batteries now. I just took them off the charger. They've been sitting for maybe 16 hours. So let's see what we have. 13.83 89 Nice They've been resting for just a couple of minutes but that's a pretty nice ACV Gotta get these installed after they get to rest for a little while Okay, and as the time for reinstalling the batteries in my UPS comes closer I'm gonna give this battery cable a bit of oversight I made this cable by just cutting up a set of starter cables and then uh, I did something wrong, I can't remember what, and I had to put it back together again. And if I started it a bit too long, it needed to be back then, but it doesn't need to be anymore. And I don't know, these crimped connections look kind of dodgy. I don't think it's showing off on camera too well, but it's kind of oxidized. So I'm going to recrimp this cable just on the other side of a clamp and uh, probably cut it down to size, maybe make it about 50, 60, 70 centimeters long rather than well over a meter and just going to give this a quick check. I don't think I'm going to redo this connection, maybe uh, recut the wire if that so, looking at these cables, it, it's pretty apparent that they are of horrible, horrible quality. We can see how they've oxidized on the inside of the cable, which isn't really that big of a problem. But, due to that, I have decided to clean these up quite a bit, and to actually solder the cables in place after I crimp them because I wouldn't want any oxidation to occur in the crimp after it's been crimped which would increase the resistance of the connection. So that's what we're gonna do. Got a strong soldering station for a reason. There we go. Nice and shiny. not going anywhere. Also, if you're going to do this, don't forget these. And just because these are horrible cheap clamps, I'm going to add some soldering braid between here and here to 
help lower the resistance of that joint there. And there we have it, our new UPS cable. This looks quite a bit fancier than the old one. I did look through these and they seem to be still fine. They are pretty much the starter cable runs through the end of this connector and the uh, Anderson cable runs to the other end, so it makes a good connection. Anyway, let's see what resistance we have on this cable since I do own a million meter from the solder joint on the positive side to the Anderson connector. I said we were down to two point something milliohm. Or really down in the limit of what this meter can measure. Or say three milliohms of the positive lead. And the negative. We were down in one point two nine there. Yeah, I'd say this is under 2 milliohms. Uh, this meter does only goes down to 1.29, so I'd say that's quite okay. The contact resistance in the battery clamps and the Anderson connector is probably going to be more than what you get in the cable. So I'd call this project a success, although I should have measured it before. Alright, so these batteries have gotten to rest for quite a few hours now, two or three. So, let's see what we got for OCV. 13.336 on that one. And... Ah, uh, this was hard. 13.305 in the other one. Now that's a result I can be happy with. I don't think we were up in such high voltages before I did this little load thing on them. So, now is the time to hook them back up with a new cable and see what kind of runtime we get. Now there we go, isn't that fancy? The cable is just as long as it needs to be to get for the batteries. So no unnecessary losses. The last cable essentially went round one or two times like that before going to the batteries. And combined with a bad connection at the clamps, that probably didn't <laughs> help too much. I also raised the flow charge voltage on the UPS because I realised that in my ignorance I had set it way too low. Anyway, moving on from that embarrassing detail, let's see what this thing can do. So we've got APC test loaded, and let's see what kind of runtime I think it's going to get with just the my 500 watt lamp connected. Runtime left 85 minutes. Hmm, well that's kind of reasonable. I think it ca oh, I must have reset it. I thought it calibrated itself down to almost no runtime at all. Anyway, I'm going to go into the configuration mode and raise the battery constant anyway to make it uh, think it's going to run for ages and then run a battery calibration to get it down to a realistic level. Well there we go, I set it to think it's going to run for 2 hours with 500 watt load and that's about 1 kilowatt hour out of our batteries so there's no way we're going to get that through you know, to even two new cheap car batteries Anyway, let's get going along nicely. I think we have quite a bit more voltage here than the last time we did this, but 
I guess we're gonna find out. And I was also timing this on my phone. It could be a complete failure too. <laughs> the battery could have gotten worse, but let's hope it didn't. Anyway, gonna let this run. And I'll check back once it dies. Well, the batteries have kind of stabilized at 24.42 volts, and they are recovering a bit of voltage. They were down to 24.2 just a little while ago. So, that's more than can be said about the last time I did this. Well, there we go. It ran for about 27 minutes in calibration mode before it shut down and uh, went back to charging. It doesn't drain the batteries completely this way but I think that's an improvement over last time when it just ran for a few minutes so I'm quite happy with it I mean it's about uh, twice as long as well a bit more than twice as long as the 15 amp hour batteries run so if we do a really crude math these are equivalent to maybe 35 amp hour batteries but I'd wager these batteries aren't as good as those AGM batteries at supplying current for a long time so yeah they're not in too bad shape I'd say they could probably have been better cared for I made a mistake by the way I set it up but hey this is gonna translate to maybe an hour of run time with my normal setup so that's alright if we take a look at the values we get out of it, you guess I just refreshed this it thinks it's 41% loaded and it's gonna run for it's gonna run for 21 minutes with a 500 watt load so that's almost an hour, a bit under an hour to completely deplete the batteries with a 500 watt load and my computer uses maybe 200 watts tops so I'm happy these batteries are going to last me at least another couple of years there we go, about 200 minutes of run time I'm supposed to get out of these batteries with just my a normal load, my computer, stereo, monitors and a single light running off it. Granted this isn't the most energy efficient setup what what with two transformer power supplies running off it. But I'm fine with two hundred and seven minutes especially considering that these are two five-year-old 55 amp hour batteries that I paid a total of 90 euros for brand new so with all the GPS is finally out of the way I took some time to clean up underneath my workbench and try and reorganize the cables a bit because it's essentially just been a bigger mess on the floor here and I'm kind of happy with the result as if I go what I just wanted but I want the floor free of cables and you can see this one cable running and that's the one from the UPS to my main computer over there I didn't have a long enough UPS cable for it but I've ordered one that's gonna fit so that corner hasn't been clean In, well it hasn't been this clean since I painted the room, which was a couple of years ago because it just got filled up with crap right away and I literally haven't vacuumed the underneath it since and uh, it's probably gonna get filled up again because I've got too much stuff in here probably gonna end up shoving a few LCD monitors underneath there because I'm getting tired of stumbling over them all the time. So there we go. Everything's back in order. The nice empty space has been occupied by IMAX and monitors. 
And above all, I've reconditioned my batteries, which I wasn't expecting to do. I had set the float voltage for these batteries to a way too low level. I did this back in 2009, and I didn't ever really think about it. So they've been floated at uh, about 13.2 volts, which is just ridiculously low, and I didn't know any better back then. I'm happy that I managed to recover pretty much the full capacity of these batteries by just cycling them a couple of times and charging them up to a fairly full stage and giving them that sh strong shock with the 50 amp power supply. So everything turned out well in the end I suppose but yeah I'm not gonna make this mistake again however having dealt with this much uh, Nothing about my own UPS. I've gotten a few ideas about how to make my entire workshop a bit more efficient because this setup rarely uses a lot more power than it needs to, and I've ordered some things to help me improve that, so we'll see if that amounts to anything.